Hello, it's the Silly Moustache here. Some time ago, can't remember when, um, I did a video on guitar straps. Well, I'm going to do another video about guitar straps, but I'm going to update it a little bit. A little bit of history. In 1996, I had a cycling accident and I um, broke my collarbone, which didn't heal up for a long time, so I've got a big knobble there, but I also damaged the joint. And so when I finally got back to playing guitar, I found that um, the standard strap that I had was really uncomfortable, rested right on the damaged bone. And so I found a saddler who made up um, two guitar straps for me, which looks remarkably like this. Three inch wide, soft leather, um, half inch diameter hole made in each end. I'll talk about the strap lock in a, in a moment or two. And uh, they were fine, they worked but they looked a bit boring, frankly. Um, that was 96, 97, 98. 99, I found my ideal guitar, um, Collings 12 fret Dreadnought DS2H. And then, for some reason, I started acquiring more and more guitars. Can't think how it happened. Um, now, I am the kind of guy that needs to know that I will take with me, every time I take a guitar out of the door, I, I will have everything to hand. So um, the case has to contain whatever I need for whatever appearance, performance, practice, whatever I'm going to take. So the most important thing is my pick box, which contains a spare digital tuner, a capo, and my magical picks which nowadays are mainly blue chip, but that's a whole nother thing. Um, so that's got to be in the pick box, in the accessory case, and in the headstock, I've got to have my guitar strap. So I've got to have a guitar strap for every guitar that I might, or might not, possibly take outside the house. Uh, that's just the way I am. Um, so I started making my own guitar straps. And uh, I, I bought leather from uh, a supplier on eBay who has always been excellent. And I get, I didn't choose, but I get um, leather that's about four to five millimeters thick, which initially is often really quite um, stiff. And I put up with that for a while. And I used to put boot polish and shoe creams on them and things like that. Don't do that anymore. Um, I always utilized um, shallow strap locks. I'm going to show you uh, something about them now. Um, here is the part that goes into the, uh, into the end of the heel of the guitar. I know that sounds dramatic. That's what I do. I've never had a problem apart from when I lent, foolishly lent a guitar to a banjo player who didn't understand the technology. I have been doing this since about 1990, ooh, probably before 1996, with no problems. So that is the male part, sorry, that's the male part that goes into, um, that's the screw that goes into the, uh, the heel. I put um, an appropriately shaped leather washer to make sure that no metal work ever touches the guitar. And um, that is the male part. And this part is the bit that is screwed onto the strap and all I do is click it on, it's firm and I don't use them um, on, the, on the back, I use the standard end pin whether that be for um, an electrified one jack plug end pin or just the standard pin that comes with it. So that's the strap lock done, I recommend them. I also suggest that you don't get copies um, you get the original shallow strap lock. Uh, they are excellent quality. No, none of them have ever failed. Touch wood. Although you do need to make sure that the uh, little securing um, nut is, is, is always tight. Uh, right, so where am I going from that? So I started using those, making my own straps. And, oh yes, I was going to demonstrate actually how I fit them onto the guitar. This gave me another... Um, advantage. I often tend to go out with more than one guitar. Typically, if I'm just playing guitar, it would be a six string and a 12 string. 
Well, this is what I can do with the shallow strap lock and my own straps. Here's a strap which I shall select at random. I shall put it on my shoulder first. Strap lock pointing outwards, little ratchet to the back. I shall pick up a guitar at random and I shall put it on there and then I shall secure it to the end pin as per normal like that. I know the distance between that makes the ideal length for me which is um, 45 inches and that just fits, it just rests on my um, stomach and um, I can take that guitar off and in the time it takes to explain to you I can pick up another guitar whether it's my 12 string or whatever put it on and we are there right it takes that long just just for the enormous applause to die, die down so that's the advantage of strap locks let's talk about the, the leather <clears throat> all I had initially was a half inch pub a pub punch um, which I used to bang in the holes top and bottom and um, and that was it initially I think um, and oh yes I used a soldering iron to darken down the edges a little bit like this this was one of my earlier attempts and it looks a bit primitive it does the job and that was the sort of colour that, of leather that I frequently got at that time and that was my attempt at doing some personalisation which also looks pretty rough of course um, it serves a purpose but I'm on to better things now, I hope. Um, as far as the uh, personalisation, I had a bit of a thing about that. Um, so I, I started doing that, put it on an extra piece of leather so I could take it off if it didn't work or didn't put it on if it didn't work. Um, and that's the sort of edging that I used to put on. Bit primitive with the soldering iron. Don't do that anymore. Um, I got many different leathers before I settled on one or two that uh, my supplier uh, has and, and uh, sells me. Uh, and um, I also discovered uh, a product called Neat's Foot Oil, which is well known in the saddlery business, I, I understand. And it's just some sort of oil that you paint on to the, onto the leather on both sides and it makes it beautifully pliable and soft doesn't come off on clothing or anything like that and dries in a couple of hours and I've started using that before that I used to have many different colors of of, um, of, uh, of straps this one in particular um, and um, and some looking like this rather yellowy um, which I didn't really like. Uh, I used to mess around with polish, shoe creams and shoe polish often used to peel off after a while. Um, the Neat's Foot Oil gives a rather attractive um, mid-brown uh, finish. So I played around, made various types. I started um, playing around with the ends narrowing the ends at the back to reduce the amount of leather rubbing against the back of the guitar um, and tapering things slightly and now I'm going in for slightly narrower straps again because um, I don't have that problem so much with my shoulder. Uh, my latest adventure was for this guitar, my Santa Cruz Roy Smeck, which is a very deep guitar um, which comes with an emeritage case, emeritage, emeritage case, uh, which is a very fine, if rather heavy case, but it doesn't have enough room in the headstock area for me to put a standard three inch wide a strap. So I bought some two inch wide leather, that didn't work, and I bought some inch and a half leather which was this, which does work, but then I got the discomfort again. So I used a bit of spare leather and made up this in the old fashioned um, leather strap type design. 
Um, I've got some rivets to hold it still after doing some posing in front of the mirror to make sure that it was in the right position. And this actually fits into the Emeritage case under the headstock of my RS. Like this. Better sit down for you to see. So that seems to be a perfectly comfortable strap that I can take with me whenever I take this out. Um, an interesting point about centers. <clears throat> when I first started doing this, I weighed about 15 stone. I don't know how much that is in pounds. 15 times 14, mental arithmetic. Yeah, you got there, I haven't. Um, now I am 11 stone something and going down. And so I've lost all of this frontage. Uh, but the distance between centers, whether I'm fat or thin, or whether the guitar is fat or thin, doesn't seem to make an iota of difference. It still comes to the right height for me. Mm, there you go. So, um, I've still got that height, that distance, those are angles of my wrist, my elbow and my shoulder. Because I often turn up in my club and other clubs with different guitars and different straps, people have become interested in my methodology and I've made quite a few straps for other people. And I'm, I'm happy to do that. In fact, I love an excuse to stand out in my workshop and make a strap. Um, so, and all I really need from them <coughs> is their preferred width of leather that I can order and the distance between the centers of the two holes. And um, of course the diameter of the end pin. So half an inch is pretty usual. Um, I also make, a, what can I show you on here? Um, I put a half inch punch through there. I cut a keyway to give you flexibility. I oval, make this oval with my um, soldering iron. Another thing, I've got the edge down a little bit better now because I don't use a soldering iron for the edges. I use um, this product that I found called Edge Coat, which I just paint on with a small paintbrush. Takes ages, but there you are. Um, and uh, very recently, I found a way to start personalizing them in a slightly more professional looking way um, by buying some extremely expensive um, letter punches. So there we are. Those are my latest straps and that is how I, um, I would give you maybe some ideas. Uh, the important thing, I don't make adjustable straps. I think it is important for you to know all sorts of things about your playing style, your the action, the relief, the um, fretboard width and things like that. And one of the other things that's more relevant to this is to know what length of strap suits you best. Don't go with fashion, don't go with tradition. Get it right by using an adjustable strap, I think that's ideal, and then you can make your own, or you can ask me to, um, to make a, a, a strap up for you. And um, that will always be right for you, regardless of what guitar, strangely enough. And also, they don't cost as much as some other straps do. Um, anyway, that's it. If you have been, thanks for watching. Bye.